Our second reading this morning is Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after that he sat down. His disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were sent before you. So here we are in February. As you, um, most of you know, I went back to visit with my family and to check on my dad and see how he's been doing after six months of uh, uh, therapy and recovering from his fall. And uh, I, it reminded me, I hadn't been back to New England in Massachusetts for the winter time for a while. It's always been summer when we go back. And so um, January, I, I forgot this part about how cold it is. And um, we had this uh, experience of being there. And um, I was reminded that growing up, January, we always had this saying that, you know, some months have 31 days, some have 30 days, some have 29 days. January has 9,685 days. <laughs> because it's so cold and all the Christmas decorations are down and so it's always gloomy and the sun is not very shiny this time of year and the great blizzards always happen in January. So people kind of look with fear and trembling on January. But we fortunately had perfect weather the entire time we were there. It was uh, a balmy 35 to 40 instead of down in the teens and, and there was a little snow. I think I have a picture of the snow there in the slides. It's, if we can get our slide person to, uh, they're in training, you know, so let's see. No, that's not it. There you go. So this is, the, this is a picture from the, my dad's back porch into the woods uh, that surround our house there. And as you can see, the trees are all bare. And um, so um, it's kind of uh, interesting when the sun comes out because you get this great, intermingling with the light and the snow on the ground. And it really cheers you up when you see this. And um, as we were talking about now, uh, how long it's been since my mom died, it was on the 29th, it was nine months since she died. And my dad and I talked about that. And um, as we thought about what it means for him to live in this place, he loves this view out his back window and we would eat breakfast there and, and gaze out there. And then, of course, talking about these sadder things, uh, we, we um, were talking about the loss of my mom and then we heard the news of the Kobe Bryant uh, tragedy and those who had died on the helicopter. And it seemed like that evoked a sort of resurfacing of the grief we were feeling and especially since it was so sudden, and it was reminiscent of how my mom had her heart attack and died so quickly. Now in the midst of the winter time and in the midst of these sad times, we come across these wonderful scriptures, the Beatitudes they're called, and we read them, and even in just reading them, it gives us a sense of hope for the future, because we, I think, internally recognize and resonate with the words that in those tough times, those tough moments we, that we have, in those moments, we receive the blessings. We wrestle with the dark in our lives, and those times when we wonder what to do and where to go and how to live and how to follow God. And in Micah, we hear the words of the prophet who who are preaching to those who may have lost hope or 
are confused of how they are to act in the midst of the darkness that they face. And Micah promises that God endures forever and that we shall not be afraid. And all we have to do is concentrate on the good and what the Lord requires of us is just to do justice and kindness and to walk humbly. We don't have to always have the answers. We don't always have to know what to do. We don't always know what the way forward might be, but we know that wherever we are, God is walking with us in that time. I took this picture of our backyard because I liked, it reminded me of when I was growing up in New England, I would, we would stay in the house for so long because it was so cold and, and it was such a fun thing to get released and to go out into the snow for about a half hour and then come back and shed off five layers of clothing which would have to be drying all over the place in the house after that but it was worth it because we got to be outside and in the sunshine sometimes and those long days of january were that much more fun if we could do that so on these light days we got to walk with my dad so um yeah here we are walking in the neighborhood it's my dad the second from the Let's see, it's my left, your right. Um, so he's walking. He couldn't do that when I was there six months ago. Um, so we saw a lot of progress of where he is now. And we had a great visit and talked about many things. And Amber and my older daughter and Susie and Linda all were able to come as well. And so we had some great times. We, saw a so we went to a hockey game. We went to the train uh, exhibit at, down, down the road from us. And we got to see our families, and it was a wonderful time together. When Jesus tells us how to act in the blessings of the Beatitudes, he says in the times of sorrow and hunger, we are to be agents of mercy and peacekeepers. We are to lift up those who are persecuted and not to be spare when we are ridiculed because God is in our midst. Now, my sister has been going with my dad to his doctor's appointments. And um, her husband um, has been driving my dad around to go grocery shopping and other errands because since his fall, he hasn't been driving. And my brother has been coming over to do various tasks in the summer. He was mowing the lawn. In the winter, he comes and um, shovels my dad out when it snows. And he's also taken on helping with the bills in the house. Uh, the church uh, that my dad belongs to, the Faith United Methodist Church, has a men's group that meets every Tuesday for bad coffee and work. And they have a great time talking about each other. Many of them are veterans, so we hear some veteran stories and we talk about uh, other things that are going on. And it just so happened this year, I mean this Sunday when we went to church, they announced their pastor is moving. So that was the talk of the men's group that day. But they all care about my dad. And so I'm grateful for that small group that gathers every week. And uh, some men have come and gone in those times, but it's a core group for him. And so all of these blessings surround my dad. And I'm thankful for those who are back there practicing their loving kindness. So now that I'm back, I'm focusing on our work together as we serve God. And so the next slide um, shows uh, Jake here saying, uh, serving communion, and we're saying goodbye to him. And I almost said Winston and Jake, but I thought maybe I better put Jake first, just <laughs> I don't want to get his feelings hurt. But he's moving on to a new adventure in his life. And I know that I've cherished the time we've had together and uh, he was one of the first people I met because we sat together at annual conference uh, and talked about what was going on here. And I have um, depended on his knowledge and wisdom and getting to know all of you and the way you do things around here. I cherish the contributions to his work that he made to the work of the youth and to the church. And he, as you know, has wonderful ideas and perspectives. And I told him, I said, we, we was talking about how the uh, Wesley group was growing and the youth group was growing. I said, you know, you're too good at this. You're going to have to decide eventually. Well, he decided, not in the way that I anticipated. 
But um, we do wish you well, Jake, as you move on to your new life. So my concern now is uh, for our future of our youth program. And as many of you have said, we want to make sure that we do all to support and nurture this important, these important people. So I believe that we then are called to practice living out the Beatitudes as we serve God together and as we walk the path of discipleship so that we can surround the youth with blessings of God, practicing mercy and kindness, reminding them and us that God is with us through the hard times and the joyful times, through the thick and the thin. And sometimes, in some ways, we are all youth directors. We all have a role to play in helping nurture our youth. It's not just up to one person or up to the parents. It's not just the job description, but we all surround our youth. One of the things my dad still talks about was when he was assigned one of the confirmation students as a mentor. And this young man grew up and he still comes up to my dad and thanks him for that time that he spent together. And my dad talks about how he didn't know anything. That's my dad, you know, I don't know anything. But whatever they did together, it was a wonderful moment together in that confirmation time. Now, before the snow melted, um, which it did the last weekend because of, we had a, a big rain, it was warm, so it didn't freeze. So before it did, um, the next slide shows you, um, I hope, Oh, no, there's another, slide. another picture of Jake having fun with his uh, flying fish. Okay, there you go. So we made a snowman. Do you want to make a snowman? Um, so uh, this is my brother, Gary. Um, I named this Gary, my snowman, because he worked for a, a beverage uh, distribution company. He wore this suit and our jacket and you don't see it, but a red cap says Budweiser on it because he helped deliver Budweiser. So this, and then I've created a little beer belly at the bottom. You can see that, right? <laughs> he really appreciated me for this. He was glad I was coming home, I guess. Um, so anyways, as we move forward, it just re it's a reminder that in the midst of winter and si the sad times of life, it's important to find joy and to find ways that we can uh, turn the winter moments into times of joy. Now, I'm grateful for being there with my dad and seeing the improvements that he's made. And it's interesting, he came up with this new thing that I've never heard him do before, but every time we were about to leave the house, he would do this, okay, one, two, three, go. And okay, dad, it's time to go. You got your jacket on? Yep, one, two, three, go. And so um, we started saying that together as it was time to leave the house. One, two, three, go. And I thought about that in today's scripture and how as we live out the Beatitudes in our everyday living, it's one, two, three, go. One is do not be afraid of the darkness or of the loss, of the changes, because no matter what happens, God is with us. That's the number one thing to remember as we travel through life. Number two, look for the light. In the midst of the darkness, the light will be there. I worked for five years as a hospice chaplain and we often would tell people who are dying and we weren't sure if they could hear us, to tell them to look for the light, that just go towards the light. Because we as faithful Christians believe in that light and that if we move towards light and are living and in our dying, all will be all right with us. And so as we move forward in this new month, in this new year, let's continue to look for the light and see how God is calling us to live out the Beatitudes in our living. And number three, be okay with not knowing what is next. We may never know what's gonna happen when we walk out that door when we go back into the community, when we leave our houses, when we follow God's lead, we may not know, but that's okay, because God goes with us and leads us. Today we come to the communion table and we are reminded as we come, we, we may leave different than when we came up to receive that bread 
and cup. If we are open just that moment for the working of the Holy Spirit. I just heard the story of how Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, was up at 3 a.m. still working on his I Have a Dream speech the night before he was to deliver it for all of us to hear and continue to hear through the ages. And in fact, at one point in his speech, you might notice if you see the tape recording of it, that he just kind of leaves his notes all together. And, and that was because he wanted to be open to the Spirit and how it was working in him in that very moment and to see what might come as a result of him just leaving space. So as we move forward with our trek, with our journey, with our pilgrimage into the future, we don't know what exactly is going to happen. We don't know who might come and lead our youth. We don't know what the future holds. But we know that God will hold us close all the time. And one of you, maybe even one of you here today, has a calling to be a youth pastor. Maybe. If you're open to the Spirit, it might just be you. So as we come forward, let us one, two, three, go into the future. Amen.